Hey guys, it's Shannon and John from That DIY Couple. And today we're gonna to be talking about getting into college. Woo! Hey guys, so as you may or may not know, John and I both graduated from Yale University, which was the number one school in the US the year that we applied pursuant to the Princeton Review at that time. And we both have had experience working as interviewers for Yale. And so what we wanna to do today is go over a lot of frequently asked questions about the college application process and try to walk you through what we know um, about this sometimes stressful and sometimes scary process. Applying to college, the number one most important thing for getting into a good college, as you might guess, are your grades. Um, but if you don't have great grades for some reason, it's really important that you let colleges know why that not, might not be. For example, um, if you come from uh, a family where you have to work when you go to high school, for example, you might not have time to study the same amount as your classmates would for tests. Um, or if you come from a sort of environment where for whatever reason you are inhibited from doing well in school, it's really important to let colleges know that for whatever reason your grades aren't as high as they might have been otherwise. Um, and it's also important to know a lot of people don't realize that colleges have profiles on basically every high school that exists in at least the US. So they will know uh, what your grades are relative to what other students get. For example, if your high school um, has a numerical grade point average out of like five or six or seven or eight, um, just because you have like a 4.0, um, you're the college that you apply to will know what that means in the context of your school. And they'll also know how difficult your school is. So if you get really, really good grades um, at a school that doesn't really have uh, a lot of people that are also getting really good grades, that's a factor. And if you have, you know, maybe only okay grades at a school that is really, really, really competitive, that also um, is a factor in the admissions process. So grades are really important, but it's also really important to contextualize your grades uh, and explain your grades uh, if you really want to get into uh, a very competitive school. The number two most important thing on your college applications is going to be the other stuff that you spent your time on during college, your extracurricular activities. Now, it used to be that people said that you needed to be really well-rounded. And this was the idea that you should do, for example, as I did, like both the African drumming ensemble and also be a member of the crew team and also be a member of, I think I was in the pirate club. You played the bagpipes. Um, you know, doing things that were sort of different and made you what was called like a well-rounded person. So you had diverse interests. Maybe you were really into physics, but you were also really into theater. That would be the classic example of a well-rounded candidate. The current trend in college admissions is that you, you need to be well-rounded as a base case. So you should have diverse extracurriculars that you really enjoy. Um, it's important not to do things just because you think it's going to look good on a college application. You need to choose things that you actually like and then excel at them um, through like your own natural initiative and excitement about them so that you come off as, you know, and actually are in reality authentic in your application. But in addition to being well-rounded, today you also need to be what's called pointy. So in addition to having a diverse group of extracurriculars that like sort of round you out as a human being, you also need to be really good at one or two things. So for example, you should be if, if you take like your most your interest that you're most passionate about you need to be like among the best at that to get into like a really good school uh, you need to be among the best at that in your age and your cohort so in in my case i was really interested in um other languages and making a difference in the world through diplomacy and like foreign service and so i spent my junior year abroad in Spain and then I did really well there academically but also had a lot of essays that just sort of described the immersion experience and really communicated you know that this was this was my thing I like totally owned it and I was really into it yeah I think it's important to consider too that there are a lot of students that are going to have kind of similar backgrounds and similar resumes like if you're applying to a really competitive school like an Ivy League school or Stanford or MIT or a great state school, um, there are going to be a lot of people that have similar grades and have similar uh, extracurricular interests, but it's important for you to show why you are unique and how you can contribute in a unique way to the school that you're going to. So for example, 
Um, there are probably a lot of kids that are really great at you know math and science that are applying to schools, but a school uh, would want to see how you are unique at that, how you are uniquely great at that. So something that I did in my application when I applied to Yale was that, uh, as Shannon mentioned before, I played the bagpipes. And um, that's a really unique thing. Not a lot of people do that, um, particularly people that are in high school that have good grades, um, that are looking to get into like an Ivy League caliber school. And I really tried to play that up a lot. Uh, and it, it set me apart, I think, from other applicants who said, oh, this guy, he's really spent a lot of time in this. You know, I was like essentially the president of my um, high school group. My high school just so happened to have a group. I was the president of it. Um, I wrote one of my college essays on it. I talked about it in my interview um, for Yale and for all the other schools that I interviewed for. So I think that really helped me a huge amount and set me apart from a lot of other kids that might have had the same grades as I did and did the same kind of um, general stuff besides that that I did. So that brings us to point number three, which is toot your own horn in the essays. The essays are not the time to be modest. The essays are the time to be extremely self-promotional. So if this doesn't come naturally to you, one good tip is to ask other people what they think makes you special. And to, you know, if you're not the kind of person who's super you know, um, self-confident and able to sort of sell yourself naturally, um, other people probably can't. So ask your mom, <laughs> ask your dad, ask your friends, you know, what is like, if there's something, if you have to say something that's unique about me, what would it be? But you want to be very introspective during this process and look inward to consider like, who am I as a person and let that shine through. Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest problems that I've seen with essays is that a lot of students are really talented writers, like creative writers, and they'll write these great essays that are very well written and very creative, but they don't say anything about who they are. Um, so they'll, they'll have a story about some time when they studied abroad or some time when they did some really cool thing, but it's just a recounting of events written in a really nice way. It doesn't really illustrate anything about how it changed the student or how they thought about it or anything interesting about them, except they might say like, it changed me a lot. Well, how did it change you? What were you like before? Why did it change you? Why is this important? Why did you decide to write about this topic as opposed to all the other topics that, you know, all the other events that you might have had that occurred in your life? It's really hard to, to draft a really good college admissions essay. And there are resources all over the internet, college counselors, um, just everybody that can tell you what a good essay is. But I'll just say like what a not good essay is, is a really well-written essay about something that doesn't illustrate anything about you. The essay has to be about you, yourself, not about your family members, not about your parents, not about your mom, how you yourself changed or learned or have a unique perspective or did something um, that impacted you in a direct way. Those are by far the essays that I've read, at least, that really stand out and make me um, interested in the person and learning more and seeing how they might be unique and fit into the community of the college. That's a fantastic point. And just to note that for the last 15 years, John and I have, in our free time, helped review college essays for kids who are coming up. And we have, that's something we see over and over and over, is that in the personal essay, people are doing what's essentially a descriptive essay. It's different than the sort of essay that you do in English class, where you want to tell a story about an event or an action. Here you want to look inward. And the real, the real meat of it needs to be about your personal growth and development. So I'll give you an example. In one of my personal essays, I described being in Spain in a moment when you know the US was invading Iraq and it was a moment of international tension and the climate was like sort of hostile towards Americans but I took that as like the first sort of set one sentence it didn't take up a lot of space and then I described um, the prestige oil tanker ca crashing off the coast of Spain and it being sort of a moment when Spanish people were angry in the press at Americans for not sending help and that was like another sentence it didn't take very much space and then I described a sense of feeling called to go and do something, to try to volunteer to help and make a difference in this way. And that was like a paragraph, you know, like more, took more time saying what happened to me internally. And then I described being on the beach and helping clean up the oil spill and the sense of feeling like a sense of connection and purpose and the, the feeling that I want to spend my life doing things that help people in some way and that utilize my unique language skills and uh, vocation to assist in you know making international relations better in some small way so this was like 
the, throughout the, tr- I think this was like a strong essay. And again, when I received my acceptance letter, someone, the, one of the admissions officers wrote a note saying that they felt that that essay was particularly strong. But the, the most of it was focused on who am I? Why would, why did this event feel so important to me? What did I learn from it? And what do I want to do with it from there on out? Right. So I had this sense of I happen to have this sense of calling in this moment. And I really focused in on that and then sort of indicated I went for like the highest possible aspirational goal, which is like, I want to change the world. I want to make the world a better place, which can feel like a bold statement for someone when you're 17. But these admissions officers want to feel like they are admitting the types of people who are going to do good things in the world. And you deserve, if you have, you know, a calling like that, you sort of deserve it. But you don't have to have this, you know, grand sense of calling. You could go, you could describe, um, you know, a, a particular sporting event, something that you learned in that moment. You, you could describe a particular obscure hobby that you have. John wrote about the bagpipes. But the key is to not focus on the hobby, the event, or whatever it is that you're doing, but to focus inward on what it means to you and what it says about you as a human being. Yeah, and I would say try to focus on something unique too. There are so many essays that are written about like the time when I traveled to whatever country for the first time or traveled outside the US for the first time or whatever. And those are fine. If it was like a really huge impact on you, you should write about it. But just realize that there are a lot of people that might be writing about a similar topic. And if you have something that's really unique to you and your experience that really changed you or you or unique perspective on something, that is probably going to be more interesting and more important than an essay about how you went to Europe and your whole opinion about, you know, the U.S. or the world was changed a lot. Which brings me actually to uh, the next important point, which is that the people that evaluate your admissions material for a school are human beings. And there might be several of them. So like we might be a component of it because we might be interviewing you. There might be one or multiple admissions officers that read it depending on the school. They might have it different ways or situated different ways. But um, you want to create a, a coherent sort of narrative of your life that would be appealing for someone to read. So it's really confusing for, for me um, as like an interviewer or an admissions officer hypothetically to read a, a bunch of disjointed information about um, someone's life that doesn't really make sense in a coherent way. So to give an example, like if, if for example, you come from a, a less advantaged background where maybe um, you didn't have all the opportunities that other people have, or maybe you might have been even discriminated against because of something to do with um, who you are that you can't change, um, it's, it's really great to paint a, a, a picture and a portrait of that and it, it fills you out as a unique person. Um, like I'll give one example. I, I um, I interviewed a student a couple years ago who told me that uh, he was gay and he had come out in high school and that he had come from a really um, very religious uh, Roman Catholic family. And I asked him, like, wow, that's, um, you know, how was that to sort of, uh, you know, realize that when you were, you know, a freshman in high school or whatever it was, like, what was that experience? And he said, like, oh, no, it was fine. Everyone was really accepting and really happy. And, you know, well, that's great if that's true. Um, there's a lot more I think that could be said about that. I don't know if, if uh, he just didn't want to tell me what the story was or if he didn't have anything or maybe it really was so fantastic. But admissions officers and, and people involved want to see a story and they want to see kind of a, a narrative of your life. And most people's lives are not like all rosy and great and fantastic. So from however you got from point A to however you got to point B, even if it was you know really not uh, the, the same struggles that somebody else might went to, like you yourself had a growth and you changed and you became an adult and um, just the ability for you to, to speak and think introspectively about it goes a long way to describing who you are as a person and how you might be able to contribute to the college, the place that you go to beyond interact with other people, um, become a great human being, things like that. I think that's a great point. I would describe that um, guy as sort of just not knowing how to play the game. I think part of learning how to play the college application game is, um, you know, I think our next point, which is like, if you have any sort of sob story and it's actually impactful to you, it's a, it's a good time to talk about struggle um, because colleges are looking for people who have been, who haven't sort of like passed through life in this, you know, protected bubble 
or everything was handed to them on a silver platter. They're looking for people who have a little bit of grit and a little bit of substance. And I think one of the mistakes that we oftentimes see from candidates from lower income backgrounds when they're trying to apply to what they perceive to be a very elite, you know, Ivy League, upper crust institution, is that they actually try to downplay their struggle, which might have been substantial in an effort to try to fit into what they believe needs to be like the, you know, polished, well presented mold. But the real winner in a college application essay in the process is to own your struggle and to say, listen, I grew up in the projects. It was hard. I had to work for every single thing that that ever came to me. And I'm like so proud of who I am. I'm rising above. That is the winning sort of essay. Yeah. Um, One of the most and, probably uh, impressive applicants I've ever seen was a kid who had like every disadvantage, or at least was described to me as every disadvantage. He grew up um, with uh, his dad wasn't in the picture. He had a bunch of siblings. He grew up in some of the most dangerous areas um, in the tri-state area. He went to really bad schools, overcrowded schools. He was the victim of crimes and bullying and all sorts of stuff. And despite all this, he was very, very um, math and science uh precocious like he just had a lot of information about that he was very passionate about it and if you looked at his accomplishments like on paper versus say a student who had had every advantage with that like there's no comparison the student that had every advantage was you know had gone to this great physics camp and had you know been on this paper that was published and had done all this other stuff but the kid that didn't have any advantages was still really really impressive in that context and that kid is way more impressive than the other kid because it's like, well, you had everything stacked against you and you still managed to, you know, take AP physics when you were a senior in high school and, you know, do really well in it. Like, that's awesome. So uh, understanding that context is so important because if that kid had, instead of, you know, been uh, having been grown up with every disadvantage, grew up with every advantage, that wouldn't be that impressive because, well, yeah, sure. I mean, if you have extra tutoring and your parents are really involved and you go to private schools and everything, taking AP physics and doing well in it as a senior, like, okay, that's like not, that's impressive, but it's not so, you know, mind-blowingly crazy that, um, that you might stand out for that accomplishment alone. So similarly, if you're a, you know, sort of privileged and affluent person who does have a lot going for you and you're applying to colleges, you think about your life and consider whether or not there is anything that's like been a difficult situation that has actually shaped you and influenced you. And if it, if it has, then it's a good time to put that in the, like you have oftentimes a, a free for all um, essay where you can essentially talk about something that makes you unique or diverse. So for example, I have a brother who is severely handicapped and who's a year younger than me. And even though I grew up in a fairly, in a, I'm going to say extremely privileged background where I had, you know, private schools, I studied at, you know, the, like the most elite high school essentially in the United States. Um, and I had literally every advantage as a like young, white, fairly affluent woman. This experience of having a special needs brother had been extremely um, impactful on my life because from a very young age I realized my privilege and I realized I was able to look at this other person who had had the same mom and dad as me but I'm gonna cry just talking about it who had had the same mom and dad as me but who hadn't been able to um, do the things that I had been able to do so if you have anything like that you should write about it sorry <laughs> got a little emotional talking about my brother but um yeah, you know, if there's anything like that in your life, like if you have, um, if there's any sort of struggle that has helped shape you and mold you, and it's something that's authentic to who you are, like now is the time to let people know. I, I'll say one more thing about the essays. Um, in addition to what John said about it being human beings who are reading them, what you want is you want to present a um, congruent version, like story of your life. So it's when you, when, when they look at your grades, if you are extremely good at math and science and not as good as like at like English and Spanish, and then they look at your essays and your essay talks about, you know, how great it was um, one summer to interview for the New York Times or to like intern with the New York Times. And then they look at your, you know, extracurriculars and all your extracurriculars are like physics clubs, etc. It's a little bit of like an incongruent essay. There's one argument that that helps make you look well-rounded, but 
I think one thing that I often see in the essays is that people choose something to write about as being like the most impactful, the most mind blowing, et cetera, thing that happened to them over a short summer period or a short two week, you know, excursion that they did with their class. And then nowhere else on their application do I see anything that's related to that. Yeah. And that's always like a weird red slash yellow flag for someone who's reading it because it's like, if you're telling me that this is so important to you, why don't I see you doing this? Why don't I see you having grades that are corresponding to it? And why don't I see you doing things that are right. similar to it? Well, it goes back before just creating like a narrative and a story that you can follow. Um, I think our last tip about the college process is there's the interview process. And I've been interviewing for Yale for a long time. And the important thing about the interview process is to continue the same idea with the essays and with everything else about creating a congruent picture of yourself and also being um, uh, being conversational. So some obviously some people are, are more extroverted than others. Some people are more charismatic than others. And just because you're introverted and maybe a little bit shy doesn't mean that um, you won't get into a really great school. But it is important to to display some aspect of your personality when you go through the interview. Not all colleges give interviews and you might not get an interview at a college and still get in. Just because you've gotten an interview doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, high up on the admissions list. But if you do get an interview um, and you talk to somebody like me, it's really important for, uh, I'll give an example. Like sometimes I'll, I'll talk to students and I'll ask them questions and they seem really interested in providing me with what they think is the correct answer or saying yes to my question. And that's oftentimes like the, the worst thing to do. Like the point of the interview is not necessarily to make me happy or to appease me. Normally interviews are very like conversational. They're not going to be like sitting and rapid firing questions at you. They just want to talk about your life and hear about you and hear how you think about things. And maybe we'll talk about an academic subject or an extracurricular thing that you really feel passionate about. Um, but it's really important to whatever it is to, to just say something about it and talk about it because the worst interviews are the ones where it's like, I'll ask a question, the person will answer it in five seconds, then it's on to the next question, right? If you can string together a conversation, be conversational about it, even like a yes or no question might be willing, might be worth a lot more explanation. And that could lead into other topics and other topics and the conversation can sort of flow, flow organically from them. Those are the most fun interviews for me. And also usually as a result, they're the people that I feel most strongly about as being um, good fits for, you know, in my case, Yale. Um, or any school that you'd be applying to. The last um, piece of advice that I want to leave you guys with is don't look around and see what other people are doing and get stressed out. Your junior year of college, your the beginning of your senior year of college when you're Sorry, your junior, your junior year of high school or the beginning of your senior year of high school where college mania is setting in is a very stressful time. However, the very best thing that you can do is keep your eyes on the ball, focus on yourself, don't worry about anybody else. And I'm going to include in this group, don't worry about what your college admissions officer is telling you is possible. Because one thing that John and I have learned in the 15 years that we have been, you know, gone through these school, great schools ourselves and assisting others to, you know, get through them is that college admissions officers will oftentimes be wrong about what is possible for you as a candidate. And sometimes at these really good schools, they try to essentially pre-filter um, these really good high schools. The college admissions officers will try to like pre-filter for Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, et cetera, like a select group of candidates that they think are good. And so they might be trying to like get you in or out of that group. If you're in that group, great. But if you're out of it, like you, anything is possible. Like if you had looked at, you know, the GPA of some of the people that we've seen get into these really good schools or the SAT score in isolation, you might think, oh, they probably don't have a very good chance. Don't let your, what you perceive to be limitations on your abilities to limit your ambition. Go for the gold here. Apply to the very best schools that you can possibly apply to because it's anything is possible and you can definitely do it. Yeah, so many people, so many of my classmates uh, at Yale, if you ask them, like, why did you get into Yale or, or did you think you were going to get into Yale? Um, they would say, I, like, I got in by accident. I have no idea. There must have been like some mistake. Everybody has the same opinion. Very few people, um, basically no one that I know was sort of like, 
applying to these schools and was like, yeah, I'm actually going to get in. Like, I'm, I'm the best. Everyone was like, it's such a long shot. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know exactly why or how I got in. And, um, you know, I interview people a lot and, and some great, great, great people don't get in. And I'm confused to this day as to why it happened. And some people that I thought were you know, um, not as great, uh, get in and they, they do fantastic. And so it's, you never know. And, uh, you, the only people that are figuring out your application are, are the college admissions officers and they might have all sorts of different metrics and things that they're looking at and things that they're interested in. So why not just try? Um, it's only time that you're wasting and maybe like the application fee, but if you can't afford it, most of these schools have ways where you can, um, you don't have to pay it essentially if you can show need so and if you can get into these better schools they have financial aid that we, they will meet you half like they will they will look at what you can afford and you won't have to pay more than you can afford so don't think that you can't go to one of these great schools just because it's really expensive you need to consider the fact that the really be the best schools have the best financial aid so right. oftentimes the very like high ranked ivy league fancy schmancy school is going to be more affordable to you than your local state school even if you're able to meet their financial aid criteria so, so great point. don't set any limits on yourself look up statistics for schools like harvard and yale and mit stanford or whatever and look at how much financial aid they give out and how many students are on financial aid and you'll be amazed. So many students at these schools are on some financial aid and a fairly significant amount are on full financial aid as in they don't pay a dollar to go to the schools due to their economic situation of themselves or their, their parents. So um, yeah, if you'd like us to talk more about the college admissions process or the interview process, or the interview process um, please let us know, give us a like in the comments. So guys, we're gonna do something special. If everybody who comments down below we're gonna have um, a little like raffle. We're gonna choose one person who comments down below to review their common app for them for free. So comment down below if you're interested and you wanna be entered and we'll, we'll choose one, um, right? Like, you know, in like maybe we'll say two weeks from today, we'll choose one and we will um, review that person's common app for free. We also, we have both extremely uh, intense full-time jobs. I'm a lawyer, John's a real estate investor, but for the past 15 years, we have really enjoyed assisting a few you know, candidates every year in the college application process by taking a look at their Common App, and we charge a small fee for that for our time. If you're interested in knowing about that service, you can email us at thatdiycouple at gmail.com. If you have specific questions, about the college application process or want to know more about us or our story, please comment down below and ask. We'd be happy to make a video for you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.